Good morning. Good morning, Bokef Top. Oh my goodness, I was so I'm look I'm looking forward for this interview. <laughs> Thank you. Thank How are you feeling this morning? Everything's good. Baruch Hashem, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're the Mrs. Feel Good of. I was just going to say that this is funny, eh? You're the Mrs. Feel Good about uh, everywhere you go. You're you're bringing a smile and you bring light. Amazing, amazing. It's so nice to see that, uh, Sandra. I, you know, you know, we're doing this up and close and personal, and it's just to introduce our members. To you know, I, I'm I'm just saying to myself, who doesn't know Sandra Cuckoo? Everybody knows her. Mm -hmm. There's some. There might be some people that are new in the synagogue, or or those who uh, don't interact in the same circle sometimes. So we. You know, we might uh, skip someone or not meet someone. And it's just so unfortunate because there's so much to learn from each other. And so if I have to ask you, you know, who's Sandra Cuckoo? Where did she come from? I mean, I mean, uh, where, where did you live and where did you move to Montreal and all kind of stuff like that? A little bit about you, is that, if that's okay to ask you. Thank you, Rabbi, for um, Cantor. Ben Lolo for bringing me on and giving me um, a space to share my story. Um, every one of our stories is precious. Absolutely. Um, I was born in Tehran, Iran, during the most uh, beautiful golden age the world had ever known. Um, the Shah of Iran was protecting the Jews. He and his father. Um, during their reign, the Jews had never had it so good mm. since Cyrus the Great. Mm. And, you know, just recently here in Canada, living here, I learned that Cyrus was probably the son or grandson of Queen Esther. No kidding. Wow. So does that make sense? That that, you know what? I mean, it's, a, it's, a, it's very possible because there's... You know, they say in every generation, uh, there's you know, you know, we're all descended from the from the from the same generations back and forth. So it's interesting that it might be intertwined, a hundred percent. And so, would it make sense that he would finance the Jews going to rebuild their temple? Nobody else would understand. Nobody here would have understand that. The yeah. depth of that, yeah. unless they had a Jewish mother. <laughs> <laughs> well, that I, everybody has a Jewish mother somewhere, I am sure. <laughs> so, what, what, when, what, what date did you move to Montreal? Um, so, what my year? father of blessed memory was Joseph Hesco Cuckoo. Wow. Uh, he built a factory for brake linings in Iran, wow. the only one in the Middle East. That's right. It must be like innovative, yeah. So it was uh, friction parts for cars, buses, and trucks. It was a gold mine. Wow. But just as he had finished paying all his debts for the factory after 18 years, mm. Khomeini came to Iran. Oh my God, so everything crumbled. So when it was full productivity. It was time to move. And then the great leader of the Jewish community, El Qanyan, who thought, oh, I have to go back to Iran because I'm the leader, I have to protect my people. Um, he was executed. What a story, oh my God. So my father, um, he was always protecting his workers. I mean, when there was somebody who um, had a daughter to marry or somebody sick, they would always come to Yusef. Oh my goodness, yes. And he, and he would be the Rahamim that they all looked to and they, they counted on it. His partner was a Muslim who they hated because they thought he was very arrogant and, uh, you know, like this. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they always would go to the Jew. To the Jew. And Rahamim, just for our viewers, Rahamim means uh, like, you know, someone who comforts, who uh, kindness and everything that, that, that gives, that imbues. And uh, that, that's what humility. the Torah calls our 
our Lord. Hashem, Hashem, and Rachum Vechanun. Yes. Wow. So, beautiful. So um, when they came after his skin, his partner's skin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He couldn't let him down because he's his partner. I mean, he, you know, Absolutely. what does a man do? Yeah. So they chucked them both in prison. Oh my God! So you have a book. I mean, I read, I read part of the book. It's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. And, and so um, he didn't waste his time uh, in prison. He used it to do to do a good to find his purpose. And so he used to organize these speaker events in prison in so everyone prison. had a wow. in prison so they would all look forward who's going to be the next speaker <laughs> and talk about a subject that's dear to their heart and he kept them in their trauma this way you know it's fu it's funny that you say that because you do that all the time is that great from your phone? No, I'm serious, Sandra. You do I that try. all the time. You always find some great, like, you know, you're talking about Rabbi, uh, Rabbi Jonathan Sachs, and you talk about the different movies to bring in I so like that it. people can. It's amazing. Maybe it's from uh, generation to generation, right? Wow. And so when I came, when I worked, uh, you see, I went to an American school. Yeah. Uh, I had a beautiful mom who uh, was brought up in a British boarding school. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> and so my parents inculcated in us the importance of language. Beautiful. In fact, uh, they pinned us to a table and chair. They put us in front of three times a week after school for one hour. We had Monsieur Amar. He was a beautiful Moroccan Jew who taught us French. Was that here in Montreal? No, no, no. Uh, oh, as we were growing up in oh you know, my I god, my American school, yes, home where I learned French. Oh, my goodness. Uh, okay. My three sisters. We were three sisters, and so we had to. And I thought this was torture, but in Canada, I thanked my parents Absolutely. every day. Absolutely. So, so from there. I want to share with you because you gave me this opportunity Absolutely. that when I arrived here at the Spanish, coming from so much pain and sorrow and waiting to get my father out and they were going to execute him. And it turns out that my intervention saved his life oh my God. so that like he could movie. come here and write the book that was so dear to him that he found his calling. Mm. So that started becoming my calling. And so we went to an American school. We had to go to school on, on Shabbat mm. because Friday was the national day of rest. Day of rest. And then because we were in a Presbyterian American evangelical school, God bless them. They gave us the best education. Wow. We had to go back home on Sunday. So it was the Muslim and the Christian holidays That's right. that we were celebrating Oh my God! at home, just having fun being at home and not yeah. at school. And right. Shabbat went to... So when I came to Canada and when I came to the Spanish, I found who I was. Wow. And then I said, I have to help. When my dad said he, he wants to embark on a journey of writing a book about the Tanakh, the Hebrew Bible, I said, I can't let him do this alone because the world needs to learn from the Jews east of Eden. Absolutely. Absolutely. And when I came to the Spanish, I saw that we are those. Not only that, but West Moroccans, Libyans, Tunisians, Egyptians, Lebanese, Syrian, Iranians, Iraqi, um, Iraqi um, even further, those who went to Shanghai, whatever. So India, my mother grew up in India. What a in fascinating a boarding story. school. So um, I saw, you know, once I remember I, I was new to the Spanish and, and I saw Rosh Hashanah and, and I looked around and I said, wow, all of these tortured people gathered under one roof. What a sad scene, and yet what a joyous one. We're all safe. We're all safe. 
wow, that's wonderful. And I thought that, you know, the world needs to know this. So how am I going to, you know, I have a little message because I was standing in front of the butt end of a rifle when I wanted to save my father. I stopped the car of the judge. And that butt end of the rifle, for me, was not Islam telling me, you Jew, you know, uh, you looted the Beitul Mal, the money of the country and all of this. In fact, under the Shah, we were the givers. The givers, so, exactly. So um, that rifle pierced down to the soul of me and was a blessing because it asked me, who are you? That's right. It made you really identify yourself and say, I have to make a difference in this world. And you've done. I mean, when I see the things that you did in your new home at the Spanish, it was, it's amazing. So you were, you were also very involved uh, with the sisterhood. Uh, you were co-president. Um, you, uh, women's uh, learning uh, group, you, you know, you're, you're doing things for them. You're always active. And that's such a, such a gift. It's such a gift because people, you know, a lot of people, just take it for granted that people are, you know, the machine is running. But how do you oh, get yeah. people inside the machine to really make everything work? That's, and you're, you're, you're uh, and I admire you for that. And how do you, how do you find the time? And I know you're busy with your work. You, you where do you work exactly? I think I'll tell the, our, our viewers. Uh, I think, I think again, it's my father who led me there. <laughs> uh, I was, I was on a quest to be my own boss. Yes. My dream was always that. Before that, I was raising kids as a single mother and, you know, whatever's there, you take. Uh, so I, I had good organizational skills, English, yes. French, you know, all of those uh, things came to help me. And so I wanted to be a personal organizer, you know, go into people's homes and help them, you know, the make their space yes. so um then the you know personnel agency called and said well there's a job you know i said yeah but i want to go on she said it's opposite the bay i said i don't care where it is i want to go on my own and I'll, she said well just try it so it was the anglican diocese of montreal and there again it's the the bible they quote the hebrew bible so i said well here's my chance to give them my father's book, my father's message, which they all bought. Even the bishop, he said, the former bishop, he said, you know, uh, I'm going to use a lot of your father's Bible verses in my homilies. Oh my goodness. What a kavod. Yeah. You see, my father led me. And then another, uh, a priest whom he said, please send me a copy in the mail. He lives in the Eastern townships. So I did, and he, he said, you know, I just got, he called me, he says, I just received it in the mail, and I, I, I'm just flipping through it, and just, you know, scanning, I can tell that, you know, your father was in prison, but he was a free man inside. Wow. wow. Me, I'm a free man, but I'm a but pr I mean, in prison. Wow, very powerful. Because he, he was sexually abused by his mother. Oh, I'm so sorry to, you know what? This is very powerful uh, a statement. You know, sometimes people are free, but they're prisoners within their own walls. And uh, some who are, like you said, you know, in prison, but are a free soul. That's a very beautiful statement. When, when, when I wanted to ask you a quick question about your, your children, your, the generation of your children and all that. How do you see the Spanish and Portuguese? How would you... Look at the Spanish and Portuguese and say, this is great because I'm leaving this for my future generation. What are we to do to make the doors of our congregation open for all these young people and for them to find a home like you did when you came in and you found a home? How can we do this for our kids, you know, for our gen, for the next generation? You see, um, Rabbi Cantor Ben Lolo, I have to tell you that when I was working with my dad's book, 
I wasn't doing it really for him because something more urgent was I was doing it for my kids. Ah, okay. And so there, there already you have that sense that you want to do things for your jet for the future. Jet. Well, this was my whole life. I mean, I gave my whole life for my parents first to get my dad out of prison, save his life. Even I married a Belgian engineer who is not Jewish in the company I was working at yes. in Iran that was building the copper refinery. Wow. Which the Americans left because they mm -hmm. were kicked out and the Europeans came to finish it up. Mm -hmm. But this man was, you know, he had a lot of knowledge. He had changed a lot in that, in the, in the site in, in Kerman where he was the most important element there because he was coordinating which uh, stage the next stage would go into for the project. And there were shipments that were coming from uh, Rotterdam from, you know, Europe of huge steel structures and um, all kinds of building material for the copper refinery. But they were, it was during the war between Iran and Iraq. And there was so mis much mismanagement so there would be uh, shipments waiting in the port of entry in the storage, collecting storage fees. Correct, and there's no, nobody to use them. And because they never, nobody could go and unblock these, so the, the workers were sitting playing cards on site. So what I did was I devised a system where, and here I'm working for the Islamic government. Uh, <laughs> I devised a system where I said, well, you know, in those days we didn't have computers. It was all telex. It was all these big, huge black binders. You know how they were in those days. And everything was done chronologically. So if you want to see the shipment M51, you have to go through all these files to find it. What happened to that? What was the correspondence with national Iranian copper industries who was always sabotaging these Europeans that I was working. So, I mean, I had to do house cleaning, basically. Yeah. Uh, like I said, why don't you put one file for every ship, every plane load, or every truck? <laughs> you organize them. <laughs> exactly. So this is what I do at the diocese. I'm an organizer. That's and I think one bishop said, all of life is organizing. And it's true. So what does the Hebrew Bible do? It organizes all of our different issues Absolutely. and brings it down to one central theme, the truth, kindness, compassion. Absolutely. Absolutely. There are two things. There, one is kindness and one is discipline. And Torah brings them together and makes them whole with the truth, and the truth is compassion. Bring them both together. Now, when I came to the Spanish and I saw all these suffering people and they're still carrying their load, as was I, I said, if I am, they're probably. Look what they went through to get here. And we left our sunny climes. We left our beautiful, you know. So I, so, but now I see they're not suffering. They're flourishing they're happy they're doing all these wonderful things but now they're suffering again because their kids are not getting that message of rahamim the, 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 they're listening to the background noise yes which i document and i archive all the time at the diocese okay well, you we know, want them, see we, what they say about us. Yes, we want we we care we care about keeping these young people, these wonderful young, uh, like your children and all the the, the the Iraqis, the the Syrians, the Lebanese, the Moroccans, the Ashkenazim, all of these people, the young people are. Future. But listen, Rabbi, you know, Cantor Ben Lolo, we have one common denominator. A hundred percent. And sometimes the simplest things to see are the hardest. It's right in front of your eyes. You know, sometimes I have my glasses on and I'm looking everywhere for them. <laughs> and, and I say, how could that be? And I see life is like that. 
It's right in front of you. It's your Torah, your grandfather, your grandmother, the, the food on the table, Shabbat. What's clearer than this? It's clear as daylight. Like. But yet, yeah. we like to say orthodox, um, conservative dogs, uh, yeah, all kinds of orthodox, uh, I don't know, all these groups. And I'm now learning a lot about the Rebbe. And he's saying, you know, all these labels are just labels. Absolutely. We are one. Well, you know, like Rabbi Friedman, he went to Israel. He said, you know, he asked people on the street randomly, who are you? He says, uh, I'm an Orthodox Jew. Who are you? I'm a this, I'm a that. He says, where are the Jews? Yeah. And then he asked one guy, who are you? He says, I'm a Jew. He says, where are you from? He says, Cleveland. You know, that's all you need to know. <laughs> I'm a Jew. I'm but, just a Jew. Yeah. So why am I so grateful to you, Cantor, for, first of all, I'm the one who introduced you to Craig Morrison. Yes, great musician. And we had a lot of fun. And hopefully after this pandemic, we'll do it again. 100%. So why? Because he loves the Jews. Beautiful. He loves music the Jewish loves music maker. Music. And you are a music maker. And so why not bring these worlds together to make us realize how great we are? So you know what, you know what I'm seeing here? And this is, I'm reading between the lines, and I love reading sometimes between the lines. You are a person that looks to, that has a, a challenge within herself and saying, how do I put this and this together to make it work? Because everything you do is, you know, compartmentalize and you, you put everything into order. You like order. You like, you know, organization, organization. And I think it's also not only physically, but in your mind also, you say to yourself, how can I match this and this to make this beautiful product? Same thing with the synagogue and same thing with children, same thing with everything. You'd like to take the parent, the child and say, look, both of you, this is your synagogue. This is your place of worship. And this is who you are. And you've got to put them together. I think, I think the young people, this is why I'm so grateful you gave me a chance to share. Oh, it's my pleasure. Something you're, you're, amazing. you're an amazing, uh, in, in, I love to interview people like you because you have so much to say and there's so many things that you would like to share. So I think it's a wonderful thing. If, if it's the last thing I will have given my kids, but also the world of Jewry, after having learned about it from my dad in such a beautiful way, before I die, if I can achieve this, my life was worth something. Is that, and here, here it is. I just recently learned, I mean, first of all, this has been a burning desire for years now. I'm still patient. I'm still willing to um, give a chance to my listeners to um, uh, se mûrir, uh, to ripen up to this. <laughs> uh, they have to find it within themselves. But I think now is the time. Look at us. We can only see each other on a screen. And yet... We're more intimate now than we were before. hundred percent. We're closer than before. Absolutely. And so we need to really, really, really see, hunker down and see that we in, at the Spanish, we have an opportunity. We have a role to play that is worldwide. And although we may know it on the surface, we must know it in the heart. Because, fine, we have one service for the Iraqis and one for the... And that's our message to the world, that one size does not fit all. Each one, you know, in their beloved way, the way their father taught, because that helps them reach the top of the mountain from wherever they are. But we all reach the same, absolutely, you know, yeah. common denominator, our God, our Rahamim. So 
wait a minute, I say, here is American Jewry and Israeli, so fractured. Yes. Why? Because of labels. The Conservative this, that, the other. Rabbi Friedman says, where are the Jews? In Israel, he's saying, where are the Jews? <laughs> so, so I'm saying that to you, Daniel. We Jews east and I discovered west of Eden, I discovered how the Jews elsewhere are and were. And although the surface was different, the, their tables of Shabbat have different flavors from ours, they still anchor into Shabbat. 100%. And Shabbat is what brought us to where we are now. And so it's, uh, how do I say this? this, this I wanted to bring Rabbi Sachs here. Yeah, we're going to gonna, we're gonna bring him. <laughs> we can bring him virtually. We don't have to pay thousands 100%, 100%. of dollars. 100%. This is what I'm begging you. Yeah, so let's do it. I think, you know, you're a doer. This is more than anything else. I think, and it's, and it's very frustrating sometimes when somebody who's a doer is not, you know, does things and then they want to do more. We got to give you that leeway. We got to give you that space so that you can create more. And I have to. And, and I have to find a way of. Yeah. Getting the message across, and not to force it on anyone, but to inspire and realize that we have a message. We are all Lebanese, Syrian, Moroccan, Iraqi, but we are Jews. Absolutely. And look how we found a way to help each other survive as a synagogue under one roof no one has a problem with Beautiful. you being like this and i being like that it only enhances each other and so I, we have a message for the american jews who i think they are very very mixed and that's why you know you have people who don't really feel when israel is hurting so they tell their husbands you know they're christian or they're or their converter, they don't feel that. But it's very scary. It's if a they very would scary listen thing. to us, yeah. I think all of those new Jews would listen to us because we come from those sunny climes. We yeah. come from where the word was put into the mouth of Abraham. Yeah. You know what? I have to tell you. I wish we had ten hours because you are so fascinating. And I'm, we're going to continue. By the way, we're going to continue one day. I think I would love to do. Um, another interview with you and go a little delve a little bit deeper into the way we, we what we what we started now and I, and I want to do that but for our viewers I want to say to everyone uh, what a um, what a gift we have to have you in this congregation because it's a very important you are no if you're you, I mean truly I'm not trying to give you acc accolades but I know the things you do and I see the things you do. And I want to make sure that our viewers know that, you know, I would love them to see what you do and for them to see what you, you actually accomplish every day. And, you know, through, through your, your lectures, your books, your work, your, uh, your endeavors, and you're going to tell us where to get your book. We would love to get people to buy your book. If they have a chance to read it, it's fine. I have a, yeah. just one moment. I'll bring them. Sure. Um, while she does that, ladies and gentlemen, I have to tell you, my dear friends, that uh, Up Close and Personal is going to continue weekly, maybe even twice a week, and meet our wonderful uh, congregants. Here she is with her books. <laughs> I <laughs> ordered. Fascinating book. And I see the back in, in the back where you have a painting. Isn't that, oh, wow, that's the painting that's on the book. I painted it for my dad. And another thing that she does well, and not even know well, but she does amazing is painting. Look at her. Oh, my yeah. goodness. Um, yes, you're a very established artist also. We would love to share the art one day when, when we do a, the next interview. Well, I have uh, the painting of, um, of Nayim Katan. In yes, it's, well, it's, in, it's in this, on display at the synagogue. And hopefully more will come. You know... Um, Absolutely. Here, this is one of my favorites. Is that Albert Einstein? You said it. <laughs> amazing. You are a, you're a very, it's amazing. So the book can be available. Yeah, if, I have uh, 200 
50 copies here in my inventory at home. Beautiful. Because so I they... ordered 300 before, but they're all gone. Baruch Hashem. How can they? How can they get a book? How can they? Um... Well, they can write to me, uh, yeah. or yeah. they can call the synagogue. Okay. Uh, well, how about you? You want to give them if it's okay. I mean, it's up to you, really. If you want to give them your uh, your email, maybe they can. Uh, they can. Yes. Can reach you. I, I would. I would like to do a donation to the synagogue from each purchase. Oh, so that's great. E so each what's your, book. What's your What's your email? Um, smiling Sandra twenty six. <laughs> smiling Sandra twenty six at gmail dot com. Very easy. I love that smiling Sandra. And look at you, you're smiling. <laughs> so you know? twenty six. Actually, it's Kaf Vav Kuku. Wow. It's, oh, that's nice. We used to be Ghazal, and my but grandfather you know? changed. His, he made two Jewish schools in Iran. My grandfather. You know this is like this is amazing, and also twenty six is the name Shem Havaya, right? God's name is numerical value is twenty six. So may God help you. May God give you a lot of strength and health and happiness with you and your family. And we want to thank you for giving us the opportunity to speak with you and to know a little bit more about Sandra Kuku, who is such an integral part of Spanish and Portuguese. God bless you, Cantor Daniel. You are the glue that keeps us together. God bless you, Sandra. And let's work together. We have so much more to do together. Please. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a beautiful day. You too, dear Cantor. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Sandra Kuku, and please come to the synagogue and listen to her and have kiddush with her. She loves... I, th I think, I think if... If we bring all of American Jewry together into yep. our fold to see oh. the way we live and yep. the way we coexist and the way we celebrate together, they might be, a place. Uh, be inspired and say, look, this is what I've been looking for all this time. Baruch Hashem. You're absolutely right. And, and that's what's going to get our kids curious about what's going on under our roof in the synagogue. So now we found we found the, the vehicle. Let's let's do it. Let's Sandra, try. God, God bless you. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you.